بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اور لكشر تدي اباوت دايبتك فوت مراي اكزامينيشن Diabetes related food problems like osteomyelitis and charcot in your osteoarthropathy are associated with a high morbidity and high healthcare cost. Red hot food in a patient with diabetic neuropathy is a diagnostic problem. MRI protocol. The MRI examination includes special attention for positioning of the food. It must be placed in the center of the magnet to obtain homogeneous fat suppression. Marker. Have to be placed over the ulcer or sinus tract. T1 and the stair or T2 fat sat sequence are needed because of the curvature of the foot. Fat suppression is more uniform with the use of a stair than with the T2 weighted imaging with chemical fat saturation. As alternative to spectral fat saturation technique, Dixon chemical shift imaging is described. Sagittal view are for evaluation of the midfoot involvement the plantar surface and the posterior calcaneus. A, a view parallel to the toes is adequate for imaging the metatarsophalangeal and interpharyngeal joint. Contrast is used to better debicate devitalized region, abscess, sinus tract, and joint or tendon involvement. MR is the imaging modality of choice for the diabetic foot evaluation in the diagnosis of osteomyelitis with high sensitivity and high specificity. 90% and 80% respectively. In early stage, MRI can demonstrate marrow edema while plain film remain normal. In this MRI image, a sagittal inversion recovery weighted image demonstrate a diffuse marrow edema of the proximal phalanx uh, and intermediate phalanx with reflection deformity and surrounding soft tissue edema. The corresponding T1 weighted image demonstrate abnormal decreased signal intensity of the marrow of the proximal phalanx relative to the normal fatty uh, marrow of the metatarsal head, suggesting osteomyelitis rather than mastitis. A coronal fat suppressed T2-weighted image shows sinus tract draining from the distal tip of the proximal phalanx out through this, uh, the skin at the site of ulcer. The greatest challenge for the clinician and the radiologist is determining whether the red hot foot is from charcot orthopathy or osteomyelitis. Location is the most important consideration since osteomyelitis nearly always develop from the contagious spread of infection. It often occurs in a predictable, more peripheral location, which tend to be at the pressure point. Charcot in orthopathy, on the other hand, is pretty articular. The most common involved joint in the neuroarthropathy are the tars the tarsometatarsal joint and the metatarsophalangeal joint. While the osteomyelitis occur distal to the tarsometatarsal joint and to the calcaneus and at the cuboid in the case of recurpotent deformity. This is MRI image short sagittal stair and a T1 weighted image in a patient with a previous amputation and recurpotent uh, foot deformity who develop a large skin ulcer over the load-bearing cuboid. The T1-weighted image also clearly demonstrates the presence of the gas uh, due to the open wound. Advan uh, advanced underlying charcoal changes are evident with the osseous loose bodies and extensive fragmentation of the midfoot bone, bone and the remaining metatarsal bases. Advanced MRI imaging technique for diabetic foot evaluation chemical shift and Dixon imaging. Fat suppression technique are fundamental component of adequate evaluation of the diabetic food. This technique helps to confidently distinguish bone marrow edema or hematopoietic marrow from the true marrow, uh, true marrow replacing lesion, such as a tumor or infection. Dixon technique can be used to acquire several echoes in the same sequence and combine them through mathematical post-processing of data to obtain not only in-face or out-of-face image, but also fat-only image by subtraction the signal intensity of the in-face image from that of out-of-face image, and a water-only image by adding both signal intensity. Thus, the Dixon technique may be considered hybrid sequence where four set of images are obtained from only one equation.
This is a Dixon sequence in a 55 years old man with the type 2 diabetes present with the foot pain and dryness. Hypo intense area of at the septalar region are demonstrated in the in face image and become more consequent uh, in the uh, opposed face and the water only image. The fat only image is to differentiate fatty marrow from edema which appear as an area of reduced signal intensity. Not the small amount of the joint fluid on the water only fluid. This finding are consistent with the early changes from a neuropathic uh, arthropathy. Diffusion weighted image. In the case of diabetic foot, do we represent a tool for potentially improved assessment of soft tissue and bone edema? Pure edema shows absence of diffuser, uh, diffusion restriction. Whereas an infection, the presence of inflammatory cell, bus and detritus, lead to decrease in free water diffusion compared with the edema detected in aseptic neuropathic arthropathy. In this image, a long axis D1 weighted fat spin echo and a short axis D2 weighted spectral attenuation inversion in coverage where show edema and uh, bone marrow replacement at the proximal pharynx of the first dog and a normal bone marrow signal intensity at the first metatarsal head. In the long axis imaging from uh, Dewey B800 uh, and ADC map, there is a hyper intense area with a restriction diffusion at the proximal phalanx of the first toe with a normal appearance of the bone marrow at the first metatarsal head. Dynamic contrast enhancement MRI imaging. Dynamic contrast imaging is usually on the base of the third, uh, 3D gradient echo sequence with the high temporal resolution with the acquisition every three to five seconds or four to five minutes. This approach shows several advantage over conventional multiphasic dynamic contrast imaging, usually with a temporal resolution of 12 to 20 uh, seconds as it allow for a better assessment of tissue perfusion and better understanding of the microvascular environment within the bone and soft tissue. This is dynamic contrast MRI imaging acquisition in, in 54 uh, years old man with the type two diabetes and osteomyelitic cuneiform bone involvement. For diabetic food assessment, dynamic contrast MRI imaging can help to discriminate between necrosis and viable tissue in case where delayed post-contrast fat suppression, P1-weighted image provide limited information. In addition, dynamic contrast MRI imaging may be better for evaluation of bone edema as the enhancement pattern can, be, can help differentiate edema and the osteoarthropathic changes from the bone marrow infection. Bone evaluation with the dynamic contrast MRI imaging in patients with a type 2 diabetes who had a neuropathic arthropathy and suspected superimposed osteomyelitis. Long axis stir MR imaging show a diffuse edema at both first metatarsal and the cuboid bone, while in the long axis key trans map obtained from biocompartmental uh, bio analysis at the dynamic contrast imaging study demonstrate high key trans value at the medial cuneiform and at the base of the first metatarsal. The TIC graph, a fast wash in consistent with the area of osteomyelitis. Note the presence of the key trans value and the, the lower steepness of TIC at the cuboid bone, which may suggest area of a neuropathic arthropathy. AMR angiography. Peripheral vascular impairment is almost always present in diabetic patients. Early diagnosis allows time for revascularization therapy and to avoid unnecessary amputation. Therefore, accurate knowledge of vascular bidder anatomy is crucial to choose the therapeutic approach and determine the patient outcome. The use of non-enhanced MR angiography is very attractive in patients with diabetes. These are low sensitive sequence that require cardiac cycle triggering. A defacing loss of signal intensity is obtained in systole due to the fast arterial blood flow. In diastole, the arterial blood flow is slower and there is no significant defacing. 
resulting in a brighter appearance of the arteries. In both phases, the veins remain hyperintense owing to their slow flow. Subtraction of systolic from diastolic imaging permits the acquisition of the an, an arterial vascular map with the proper with the proper background suppression of the soft tissue and vein. Maximum intensity projection can be performed to obtain an angiographic reconstruction. This is an enhanced MR angiographic scheme for a quantitative flow sensitive study at the proximal posterior tibial artery where the red region of interest is located, is synchronized with the cardiac cycle. In diastole, high signal intensity is identified within the artery due to their slow flow, whereas in the systole, there is a loss of signal intensity due to fast flow. This is a three-dimensional maximum intensity projection reconstruction show an incomplete stenosis of the anterior tibial artery in a 71 years old woman with type 2 diabetes. So uh, such a reconstruction may be performed to obtain an arterial map of the distal vessels. Osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis in diabetic with a neuropathy is infection of the bone that is usually a result from continuous spread of a skin ulcer. Consequently, the most common location for osteomyelitis is not in the midfoot but at the pressure point of the forefoot, beta tarsal head, interphalangeal joint, and at the hind foot at the blanter aspect of the posterior calcaneus. While diagnosing osteomyelitis is important, it is unfortunately also difficult. Clinical and laboratory signs and symptoms are generally unhelpful. The clinical diagnosis relies on identification and characterization of associated foot ulcer, a method that is often unreliable. It is important to mark the skin or subcutaneous tissue abnormality, that is to say, ulcer or sinus tract, and to find its relation to the area of bone marrow signal intensity abnormality. The bulb to bone test, that is to say, palpation of bone with a sterile blunt material probe and the depth of infected beetle ulcer was thought to be highly correlated with osteomyelitis. In later studies, However, it had a relatively low positive predictive value. On a plain radiograph, bone infection may not show up on the first two weeks, and in the latter stage, the radiographic characteristics of neuroosteoarthropathy and osteomyelitis overlap. In both cases, there will be a demineralization, destruction, and periodic reaction of the bones. Particularly when neuroosteoarthropathy is present at the later stage. This is MRI imaging of the patient with the small cutaneous defect and subcutaneous edema at the metatarsal. A secondary sign, an abscess, is shown in the forefoot with the high signal intensity on the stair, low or intermediate signal intensity on T1, and the ring enhancement of the border showing. A high signal intensity on T1, uh, T1 plus gadolinium. MR imaging shows that the marrow in the tip of the great toe has a low signal intensity on T1 and high signal intensity on T2 and enhanced after administration of contrast material indic indicative of osteomyelitis. Abnormality. Abnormally decreased signal intensity on T1 weighted image is a more specific indicator of marrow edema than increased signal intensity on T2 weighted image alone, which may indicate osteitis or reactive marrow changes rather than osteomyelitis. This is a patient with osteitis who uh, and patient who underwent uh, transmetatarsal uh, amputation. Digital T1 weighted and the T2-weighted fat suppression MRI image obtained at the level of a grade 2 show a large soft tissue defect at the stump. Marrow is hyper-intense on T2-weighted image, but no corresponding marrow abnormality is seen on T1-weighted. This is combination of finding is indicative of a reactive marrow edema due to osteitis, not osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis in a patient with underwent a partial a calcaneal resection, a sagittal T1 weighted image, MRI image, show a large 
soft tissue ulcer and the extensive region of hypointensity in the continual marrow deep to the ulcer. This is uh, MRI short uh, axis D1 and T2 weighted fat set image. Show a skin callus. Uh, this is a soft tissue beneath the base of the fifth metatarsal has a low signal intensity in both T1 and T2 weighted image with no skin disruption. The marrow adjacent to the callus appear to be normal. Adventitial bursitis show uh, this uh, MRI imaging show a collapse and the fragmentation and a rocker button uh, deformity in the bone of the midfoot and an area of uh, high signal intensity is seen beneath the cuboid bone with the peripheral rim-like enhancement finding ind indicative of fluid collection preservation of a subcutaneous uh, fat superficial to the cyst like fluid collection also seen Presence of subchondral cyst help to, uh, to exclude a superinfection at the calcaneo acuboidal junction joint. Abscess in the patient who underwent a transmetatarsal amputation show a large plantar soft tissue a fluid collection that is hypointense centrally on T1 weighted and uh, hyperintense on T2 weighted image with a thick rim like layer of enhancement. Adjusted subcutaneous fat has been replaced by a soft tissue. Multiple loss signal intensity foci due to the susceptibility artifact are indicative of gas or foreign body introduced during surgery. Foreign body granuloma, this MRI imaging show a plantar fluid collection with a peripheral rim like enhancement. Uh, and the round area that are uh, hypointense on T2 and the medial and the lateral to the fluid collection, finding indicative of the foreign body and adjacent reactive hyperemia. A small foci of blooming artifact also seen. Gas gangrene in patient with the crepitation of the foot and the sign of infection. This MRI show a low signal intensity for site of blooming artifact along the flexor tendon sheath, finding indicative of extensive soft tissue gas. The sheath, uh, the sheath is distended by fluid. This is a long axis T1 weighted MRI imaging show an ulcer over the great toe and a distended flexor tendon sheath. It is unlikely that gas enter from the ulcer, finding are suggestive of white gangrene and infection. Septic arthritis, this is MRI imaging obtained at the level of the forefoot, show a dorsal ulcer and the plantar cellulitis and, uh, and effusion with a thick area of enhancement and erosion in the interphalangeal joint. Finding indicative of septic arthritis, the marrow, uh, the marrow abnormality is localized to the subarticular, uh, subarticular bone. There is no association of Osteomyelitis. Charcotineuro osteoarthropathy. It is a degenerative disease with a progressive destruction of the bone and joint. It is seen in a patient with a neurological disorder with a sensory loss of food. In include tips, dorsalis, leprosy, diabetic neuropathy, and other conditions involving injury to the spinal cord. In 1868, Jane Martin Charcot gave the first detailed description of the neuro. A neuropathic aspect of, the, uh, of this condition in patients with syphilis. Today, diabetes mellitus is the most common etiology associated with the charcot osteoarthropathy, with the joint of foot and ankle being most commonly affected. Here, an illustration with the key MRI feature of acute charcot osteoarthropathy showing a subarticular marrow edema in midfoot. Subcutaneous soft tissue are relatively uninvolved. The exact nature of charcot arthropathy is unknown. There's two theory. The neurotraumatic theory states that the charcot arthropathy is caused by an unperceived trauma to an sensate food. The sensory neuropathy renders the patient unaware of the osseous destruction that occur with the continuous embolation. 
The neurovascular theory suggests that underlying conditions lead to development of autonomy neuropathy causing the extremity to receive an increased blood flow, which in turn results in mismatch in bone destruction by increased osteoclast activity and bone synthesis. Acute charcot, acute acute charcot uh, neuroosteoarthropathy is defined by a clinical sign. There should be neuropathy, warm and swollen food. The skin temperature should be two degrees or more at the site of the maximum deformity of the affected food compared with the similar site on the contralateral food. Osteomyelitis should be excluded and the fever is not present. Serum C-reactive protein level is normal or only a slightly elevated. The differential diagnosis is infection like osteomyelitis, cellulitis, septic arthritis, and an inflammation like gout, rheumatoid arthritis, and the vein thrombosis. In this early stage, radiographic abnormality are not present. The acute stage of charcoal show rapid and progressive bone and joint destruction with days or within days or weeks. Mobility by total contact testing can prevent further bone and joint destruction. In the acute stage, MRI shows only subchondral bone marrow edema. In this radiograph of the patient with the diabetic neuropathy and the red hot food, in acute stage, the radiograph are normal and may um, and, and may not exclude the diagnosis of acute charcot in neuroosteoarthropathy. Within four months, there is a progressive decrease of calcaneal inclination with equinous deformity at the ankle. There is a destruction of tarsal metatarsal joint with a typical rocker bottom deformity. Bone debris is seen on the dorsal aspect of the foot. In this RI image of the patient with acute charcot in neuro. Osteoarthropathy, the bone marrow edema typically is not restricted to one bone, one or two bone, but is seen on the entire midfoot. Bone marrow edema and its enhancement are typically centered in the subchondral bone, suggesting articular disease. The subcutaneous tissue are relatively normal and there is no ulcer or other sign of infection. Chronic charcoal. The chronic inactive stage no longer show warm and red food. The edema usually persists. Crepitus, palpable loose bodies, and the large osteophyte are the result of extensive bone and cartilage destruction. Joint deformity, subluxation, and dislocation of the metatarsal head to rocker bottom type of deformity in which the cuboid becomes a weight-bearing structure. This results in excessive skin color formation, blisters, and foot alteration. Bone healing and changes of the active pre reaction will proceed into inactive pre reaction and sclerotic borders. The classic radiographic description of the neuroosteoarthropathy is that of the 5D. Density change, a subchondral osteopenia or sclerosis, destruction, osseous fragmentation and resorption, debris, intra-articular loose bodies, distension, joint diffusion, disorganization, and dislocation, joint malalignment due to the ligamentous laxity. This is a normal radiograph in acute stage of charcot with subsequently progressive charcot in neuroarthropathy is seen with a dislocation of lisifrant joint. This MRI imaging show a rocker bottom deformity and midfoot fragmentation. A joint effusion extended from the tarsal metatarsal joint to the plantar soft uh, to the plantar soft tissue, but the subcutaneous part superficial to the joint effusion is maintained. A subchondral marrow edema on the calcaneo cuboidal joint is a result of neuroosteoarthropathy. Uh, this finding are characteristic of the synovial outpouching and effusion associated with the neuroarthropathy and the similar to those of Abscess. The absence of a skin ulcer and lack of a typical location should help differentiate the two. Charcot with the superimposed osteomyelitis. To determine whether osteomyelitis in charcot food at MRI image is present, follow the path of ulcer or sinus tract to the bone and evaluate the signal intensity of the bone marrow. If there is bone marrow edema, osteomyelitis is very likely. If there is bone marrow edema in the absence of a cutaneous defect, active charcot may present. If it is normal, 
both active charcoal as well as osteomyelitis is not likely. This is a typical rocker bottom deformity of the foot due to the collapse of longitudinal arch. Abnormal pressure on the cuboid has lead to ulceration. In patient with the charcoal in your osteoarthropathy, a rocker bottom foot the cuboid bone is an important location of osteomyelitis. If the T1 weighted image of that location show low signal intensity in combination with the cutaneous defect, osteomyelitis is extremely likely. This is a patient with active charcot in neuroosteoarthropathy with the plantar ulcer along the bony protuberance of the cuboid. There is abnormal signal intensity in the cuboid next to the ulcer indicative of osteomyelitis. And this is MRI imaging show enhancement of the cuboid bone and adjacent soft tissue on post contrast imaging together with the plantar ulcer make osteomyelitis very likely. This is a patient with a chart of neuroosteoarthropathy with the subcutaneous fistula tract. This patient has a subcutaneous edema and the swelling. When we follow the fistular tract to the bony protuberance of the cuboid, there is no marrow edema at the midfoot. This makes it osteomyelitis unlikely. Tarcoat foot in your arthropathy with the lisofrank, dislocation, destruction of the tarsal metatarsal joint and the classic rocker bottom foot with the increased load bearing on the cuboid and subsequent overlying bursa formation. This is axial proton density weighted fat suppression image demonstrate a later sub uh, subluxation and the fragmentation of the second and third metatarsal base with the diffuse marrow edema. The navicular is rotated such that the lateral cortex articulate with the second metatarsal base and it is distal cortex with the medial cuneiform. There is also a marrow edema and cortical irregularity in the metatarsophalangeal joint. Diffuse soft tissue edema also present. This is a sagittal fat suppressed T2 weighted image demonstrate disruption of the longitudinal arch of the foot with the plantar flexion of the talus and the navicular bone and the relative dorsal subluxation of the first metatarsal. A fracture of the medial cuneiform is also present. This is a sagittal fat suppressed T2 weighted image demonstrate a plantar angulation of the cuboid with an underlying fluid collection and the thinning of subcutaneous tissue. Ghost sign. The ghost sign is indicative of a neuroosteoarthropathy with superimposed osteomyelitis. The ghost sign refers to poor definition of the margin of the bone on T1 weighted image, which become clear after contrast administration. This patient with the neuroosteoarthropathy at sumbar on post osteomyelitis. The area of osteomyelitis are more pronounced in the contrast enhanced T1 weighted image as compared to the native T1 weighted image. The bone marrow uh, edema, which is of low signal intensity on T1 weighted image without contrast enhanced and become as bright as normal bone marrow. The good sign, a large portion of the cuboid and the cuneiform appear absent on the sagittal T1 weighted image, but are clearly visible on the sagittal T2 weighted image in case of charcoal foot with a clinically suspected osteomyelitis. Conclusion, MRI imaging with or without intravenous contrast is the most specific and accurate mean for diagnosing charcoal in your arthropathy and for, for assessing potential complication or the presence of Infection. The detail of this anatomy allow evaluation of a precise location and extent of the bony destruction associated with both charcoal foot and osteomyelitis. The multiplanar soft tissue detail unique to MRI enable detection of abscess and sinus tract, which are essential in distinction, distinction between charcoal chains and superimposed osteomyelitis. If charcoal osteoarthropathy is diagnosed early, before X-ray change and treated appropriately, the risk of future morbidity is greatly reduced. However, it is often misdiagnosed by primary healthcare physician. This is the reference, and thank you.